JSON Web Token, which is one of the most important topic for user authentication. Throughout this mini course, you will learn how to use JWT with, with sign up, login, logout for front end as well as back end in easy explanation. I am very excited about this and hope you are too. So let's understand JWT in depth. So JWT stands for JSON Web Token, which is used to securely transfer information between two parties like backend and frontend. But the main reason for using JWT is to authenticate user with using its token. So let's understand this with the example. So here is a Harley. He log in with his account information, email and password. Now our server first check the information and if it's true, then server returns its user ID as a response and store that in the session or cookie. Now whenever he sends a request for some secure information, let's say all his bank information. So server first ask for the user ID and if he has user ID, then and then server sends the secure information. But here one big problem. This session or cookie in which we store our user ID, it can be easily modified in the browser. Let's say I just change this user ID to someone else user ID. Then we get the information about that user. So this approach is not secured. Now to solve this issue, we introduce JSON Web Token. So now Harley again log in with his email and password. Now our server first check the information and if it's true, then server returns the long encrypted unique token and store that in the local storage. Now the great thing about this token is it is made with user details and one secret key which we define on server. So whenever Harley sends request for secure information, then server first ask for JWT token and verify it using our secret key. If it's verified, then and then server will send that secure information. And if we change anything in user information, then our token will change. So that's why we use JWT for user authentication. I know you have many questions related to JSON web token. But watch this full tutorial, it will clear your all doubts. So in this tutorial, I am going to use Node.js as a backend and React.js for the frontend. But you can still follow this no matter which programming language you use. Here I create one simple project in Node.js in which first I connect this node server with my localhost MongoDB database and listen this server on localhost 5000. By the way, you can also download this starter code, link is down in the description. Let's first install all dependencies for this project. So open terminal and write npm install. Let it run in the background. Now in models folder, I create one model called user with only three fields, name, email and password. Now in the route folder, I define all routes. The first route is for user registration in this user.js file. So here, first we get all data from request.body and destructure it. Then we check for existing user and after that, we will save the user information in the database and send user's information as response. Pretty simple route. Then in server.js file, I import this user route and define this route path as API slash user. So open up terminal and write nodemon server. This will continuously update server on change. Great. We get database connected. So let's test this with postman. Now I pass our route here and select row and json. Now here I pass data object and click on send and see we get user data. Now if we again click on send button, then we get user already exist. So that's the little introduction for who is watching node first time, just for understanding. Similarly, we have another route called auth for login. Let me directly show you in postman. So I pass correct email and password and then click on send. See, we get current user. But if we pass wrong password, then we get error. Now there are three main tasks for JWT in backend. First one is generate token on register. Second, generate token on login. And last, 
when user ask for secured information, we have to verify token. So let's start with task number one. So open terminal and add new terminal and write npm i json web token and hit enter. Now in user route, at the top, I declare jwt equals to required and json web token. Now after we store data on registration, we generate jwt token. So write jwt dot sign. Now first argument is our data which we want to pass with this token. So I create new variable called jwt data equals to underscore id user dot underscore id comma name user dot name. Now pass this jwt data here. Now the second parameter is our jwt secret key. So we can pass here any string like code bless you or whatever. This secret key is very important for authentication. In this case, it's not secured. So we will declare our secret key in .env file. Right here, jwt secret equals to anything like 123 code bless or something which will not easily guess. Like if you are creating Zometo app, then secret key is like Swiggy is the best. Now save it and back to our user route file. Here we add process.env.jwt secret. With this process.env, we can access variable of this env file. Now if you want to expire token in some time, then we can also define that. So I want to expire this token in 2 hours. So if user pass this token after 2 hours, they have to log in again for new token. So write in object expires in and in double quotes you can write time. If you want to expire it in one day then pass 1d but I pass here 2h for 2 hours. Again telling you this is optional. Now store this in variable called token and in the response send token. Save the changes. Now in postman we create a new user code to at the red gmail.com and click on send. See, we get this encrypted long token. Now copy this token and head over to jwt.io. This is the official site of JWT. You can read here its documentation. Now click on this debugger. Here we can decode our token. Now let's understand what inside this token. So paste our token here. Now all tokens divided into three parts. First part is about header which is in red color. Second part is about payload which is in purple. And last and most important part is signature which is in blue color. Now this header contains the algorithm and token type which is very common, don't focus on that. Now this payload contains the data which we want to pass with this token. In our case, we pass id and name. See. Here we get our data. So we can display that data on our front end without request for new API. And we have more data i at which stands for issued at and the value is time when our token generated and exp is our expiration time. Now the last part signature which is generated based on our header, this payload data and secret key which is only available on server. So this will prevent users from getting their own token and then modify it with id to pretend to be someone else. Because if you modify anything in this payload or header, then this signature will regenerate it. So there are no chance for user to do something unethical. So that's why JWT is so popular. So we successfully create our JSON web token for register. Now let's do the same for login. So copy these three lines and go to odd.js file and paste it here. And at the top, we declare jwt equals to require json web token and save it. Now in login, I pass correct data and send it. See, we get token. So we successfully complete our second task for backend. Now the last task which is when user requests secured route, which means that data 
is only accessible by logged in users, then we have to first verify the JSON web token and if it's valid, then we return data. So in user.js file, we add new API for getting the current logged in user information, which we display on profile page. So write router.get slash for path and error function with request and response. Now we need to create our middleware in which we verify token on every secure route. So create a new folder called middleware. And inside it, we create new file called auth.js. Great. Now here, we first define the function and add module.exports for export this function. Now you might know every middleware function has three parameters, request, response, and next. For now, let's not worry about this. Now inside this, we first fetch the token which we pass through header. So request.header and pass here header name. I pass x or token, which is commonly used name. You can pass whatever you want to. And let's store this in token variable. After that, we will check if token is not available, then return response.status 401.send and pass access denied token not found. And if token is available, then we verify it. So at the top, we declare JWT equals to require JSON web token. Now here, we write JWT dot verify. Now the first parameter is our token, which we want to verify. And the second parameter is our JWT secret key. So write process dot env dot JWT secret. Now this will give us ID and name which we pass earlier. So let's store this in variable user and we pass that values in request dot user equals to user. After that we will call the next function so it will run the API. Now if this token is unvalid then this code will give us error. So we add try and catch block for that. Now move this inside try block. Now in this catch block, we write response.status400.send invalid token and save it. Now back to user.js route and first we import auth. So write const auth equals to required double dot slash middleware slash auth. Now we pass this auth middleware here. So when someone calls this API, this auth middleware will run and if token is verified, then and then this function will run. Now write await user.findById and pass here request.user.id which we declare in auth middleware and store it in variable called profile and then response.send profile. Here we add await, therefore we have to write here async. Save it. Now let's test this private API. So back to postman and add new request. And pass here http colon double slash localhost colon 5000 slash api slash user and click on send. See, we get the error message access denied because we haven't passed token in header. So go to header section and here key is x auth token which we pass in auth middleware and here we pass our token. So I copy this token from login test and paste it here. Now click on send and we get the user profile. Now if we change anything in this token and send it then we will get invalid token. So our backend part is completed here. Minimize this server vs code because we need to keep running this server. Now we will see how to handle JWT in React. So here I open the client folder in another vs code. And first of all, we will install all dependency. So open up terminal 
and write npm install and let it run in background. Let me give you a quick overview of this React application. So in this app component, I create one navbar and inside this navbar, I create three nav links. And for routing, I create this routing component in which I define all routes like home, login and register. Simple as that. Let's run this application. So open up terminal and write npm start and hit enter. See, this is our home component. After that, we have login form on login page. So if we write email and password and then submit the form, we get values in console. And similar to this, we have registration form. So we fill the form and click on register button. Then we get values in console. So for JWT, when user register, we send token from the backend, right? So after that, we store that token in local storage of browser and pass that token when we making any secure API request. In our example, our profile API. So similar to backend, we have three tasks for frontend. First one is we store token on register. Second, we store token on login. And last, we set token to our header so we can make secure API request. So open up terminal and add new terminal and write npm i axios and hit enter. If you don't know axios, you can check my axios guide video. Now I create a new folder called utils for utilities and create a new file with name http.js. Now in this file, first of all, I import axios from axios. And after that, I create one variable called instance equals to axios.create. Now pass object and inside it, we write base URL. And here we can pass our backend base URL, which is HTTP colon double slash localhost colon 5000 slash API. And at the end, export default instance. So basically, we create a shortcut for making API request. So we don't need to write every time full URL. If we make request for localhost colon 5000 slash API slash user, then we have to just write slash user. Now go to component folder, register and open this register.js file. So this is our registration form. Now in submit function, we will call our register API. So at the top, first import HTTP from, we go two folders up and add utils slash HTTP. Now I remove this console and write here HTTP dot post. Now the first parameter is the path of our API, which is slash user. And second parameter is user details. Now this statement returns a promise. So let's handle this with async await. So I write here await and here we pass async. Now let's store this value in variable called response and console this response. Save the changes and take a look. Go to registration page and fill the data with unique email and click on register button. See, we get this response object. So in this data, we get our token. So let's destructure this response and get this data property. Now let's store our token in our local storage. So every browser has their own small storage. So we write local storage dot set item. Now the first variable is the name of this field, which is token. And second, we pass data which is actual token. And after that, we will move user to home page. So for navigation, we use React Router DOM. So at the top, I import use navigate from React Router DOM. And right here, let navigate equals to use navigate. And after this, 
we write navigate and inside it we pass our path which is slash. Save the changes and take a look. Now pass different email and click on register button. See we redirect to home page. Let me show you where we store our token. So go to application panel over here. Now click on local storage and select your web URL. See we store our token here. Now back to registration form and pass the same data and click on register. So in console we get error. So back to our react application and we add try catch block for handling this error. Move this code into this try block and in catch block we will simply console this error. Save the changes and take a look. Click on register button. See we get the error object. Now in this error response we get our data which we send from backend. User already exists. So we write here if error.response is available and end error.response.status equals to 400 then set error error.response.data which is our state variable. Because we don't want to show any other error which we don't send from backend. And at the bottom I already add the condition which is if error is available then print that error. Save the changes and take a look. Now I click on this register button and we get this error. Now similar for our login page. So I copy this try and catch block and open login.js page and in the handle submit function paste it. Now copy these two imports and paste it in login component. Now copy this last navigation line and paste it also. Now here we change the path from user to auth and pass this form data which is also user details. Save the changes and take a look. Now fill this form with wrong information and see we get our error. Now pass the right information and see we redirect to home component. And you can also check token stored in local storage. Now I don't want to show this login and register link if user is already logged in. So back to app component, we create one state variable called user and initial value to null and at the top import use state from react. Now the logic is when this user state is null which means user is not logged in and if user is available then user is logged in. So the question is how we can get the current user data. Remember we pass our user data into our JWT payload section. So we use that data here for authenticate. Now we add here condition if in local storage we have token then we get data from token. So write if local storage dot token is available then change user state. Now how we can decode our token and get that data. So for that we have one library called JWT decode. So open up terminal and write npm i JWT dash decode and hit enter and close this terminal. Now here we import JWT decode from JWT decode. Now inside this if we get first token from local storage dot get item and token. And now we use JWT decode and inside this we pass this JWT token. Now store this in variable log user and set user to log user. Now let's console this user state variable. Save the changes and take a look and we get error which is because of infinite loop. Let me explain you. So here first we check for token and we set user data to this user variable which creates infinite loop. So we have to move this code outside of this app component. Now remove this set user function and direct pass this log user value as initial value. Now before this if condition 
we define this log user variable because if token is not available, then we can't access this log user variable and remove this const also. Now save the changes and take a look. See, we get our user details. Now using this user variable, we will display private links and hide this login and register link. So pass this user as props in this navbar component. Now in navbar component, we destructure props and get user variable. Now we wrap these two nav links with condition which is if user is not available then show these links. Now we have to pass here react fragment and after that if user is available we will show two more links profile and log out. So I duplicate this block and change condition and first link for profile and second for log out. Save the changes and take a look. See, we get our profile and logout links. Now go to application panel and select this token and remove it for testing purpose. Now refresh the page. See, we get login and register links. Right now, you think our application is running well, but we have bug here. Let me show you. So open login form and write email and password. Now click on this login button. Now refresh the local storage. See, we get our token, but these links are still visible because in app component, this if condition only run one time. So if we manually refresh the page, then we get other links. So after login, we have to automatically refresh the page. It's very simple. So back to our login component and remove this navigate and add here window.location equals to slash. Now remove this use navigate and also remove from import. Save this and copy this window.location and paste it into register component. Remove this use navigate and also remove import. Save the changes and take a look. Now again remove token and refresh the page. Now fill the email and password, then click on login. See, we get our links without manually refresh. Perfect. Now let's create components for these two pages. So in components folder, I create new folder called profile and inside it, create a new file profile.js. Now write RAFCE for react boilerplate and I pass here h1. This is profile component. Save it and let's create a new folder called logout and inside it create a new file logout.js and again write RAFCE for boilerplate and save this. Now go to routing.js file and here we define our routes. So duplicate these two lines and change path to profile and element also profile. And for second route, we change path to logout and element also logout. Save the changes and take a look. See, we get our routes. Now let's first complete the logout feature. So open logout.js file. So logout is basically removing the token from local storage. That's it. So I import use effect from react and here I create use effect, arrow function and empty array because we only want to run this one time. Now inside this use effect, write local storage dot remove item token. And after that, we will redirect to home page. So write window dot location equals to slash. Save it and take a look. Now click on log out and see we successfully logged out. Now let's log in again and see it works well. Now in this profile page, we want to display user information and for that we have get request slash user. So let's open profile.js file and first we import use effect and after that we import HTTP from we go to folders up utils slash HTTP. Now in component. We declare one function 
called get user profile arrow function and inside it we fetch data so write http dot get slash user now let's add a wait and for that we have to add a sync great now let's store this in variable called response and console the response now let's create a use effect and inside it we call this function save the changes and take a look go to profile page and see we get error which is unauthorized because of our auth middleware which we declare in backend so only that user can access this information who sends token in header so let's solve this issue so for that we create new file in utils called set auth token dot js now create function called set auth token and pass here token now inside it we write if token is available then we pass this token in header by using axios so import axios from our http file this is very important step and right here axios dot defaults dot header dot common and in square bracket we pass our header name which is x or token which we set in our backend equals to token now in else we write delete and then copy and paste this command and let's export default set or token now let's call this function in app component so first import set or token from utils slash set or token now after we store this token in jwt we write set or token and pass our token which is jwt save the changes and refresh the profile page see we get data of profile so that's how you can pass token in header now you don't need to write header for all request this set or token will do that for you now let's take this application more advanced because here i found one bug so let's log out and in the url add slash profile and hit enter see here we get the profile component which is only accessible by authenticate user although they can't get any data because of our secured api but it's not a good practice so if user without logged in try to enter in this page we will redirect user to login page so let's create a new file in routing folder called private route now write rafce for boilerplate and we return here if user is available then show outlet which will help us to display a child component i will show you that in just a second and if user is not available then navigate to slash login make sure to import outlet and navigate from react router dom and we get user from props so back to app component and in this routing component we pass user equals to user save this and in routing component we destructure user now in react router version 6 we can define private routes very easily this private route is nothing but just a function which will redirect user if they have not logged in so write route and don't pass path directly element and pass here private route component with user equals to user and close this route now in between this route we can pass all our private routes so let's move this profile and log out route so this basically means whenever someone try to route any of these routes then this private route function will run first save the changes and take a look see we directly move to login page now login with your information and in the url type slash login and hit enter see we get this login form so let's fix this real quick so here we pass this user for login component now open this login component and destructure props user after that 
we write here use effect and arrow function with empty array. And inside this, we check if user is available, then we send user one step back. So let's import use effect from React and import use navigate from React Router DOM. And after use state, we add let navigate equals to use navigate. Now write here navigate and pass minus one, which means one step back. It works like back button in browser. If we write minus two, then it will go two steps back. Save this and take a look. Now type here slash login and enter. See, we redirect to home page. Now let's copy this from login.js file and paste it inside register component. Now again copy these import lines and paste it at the top. Now go back to routing component and pass user equals to user for register component. And in register component, we destructure user in props. Save the changes and take a look. See, when we try to hit register page, we redirect to one step back. So congratulations, you successfully create user authentication using JWT, which is the most used way to authenticate user for web applications. I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial. If you have some doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. See you in the next tutorial. Have a nice day.